It's like uh, it's like electronic LSD. The, the, the major lesson of uh, the social sciences in the 20th century uh, is what I keep stressing in all my books. Every brain creates a different reality tunnel. Different social scientists have discovered this by different paths of uh, investigation, and I've stated it in different metaphors, but anthropology, social psychology, individual psychology, depth psychology, sociology, communication theory, uh, neurology, they all, in one way or another, recognize this. Every brain is creating its own reality tunnel. And then people go on acting as if their reality tunnel is the real one and everybody else is a little bit crazy. So the question is, how can we teach people to get over their early conditioning and imprinting, which makes them act as if their reality tunnel is real, and everybody else's reality tunnel is some kind of psychotic delusion? And that has been the major question of the 20th century in the social science. How do we teach people to remember this? Anybody can understand that you read any book on sociology, psychology, any of these fields, you can get this lesson, and then you forget it, and you go on acting like you didn't get it because you've been conditioned to act like your reality is the only reality. Well, in Harvard in the 1960s, they found out how to get people to really recognize that their reality tunnel is being created by their own brain. They did some amazing research. The Good Friday study in the, the chapel there where they induced religious experiences. And 80% of the subjects who got the LSD and 0% of those who didn't get who got the placebo. Uh, the convict rehabilitation project in which they took a whole bunch of convicts and uh, uh, after release, none of them... Uh, well, not none of them, but uh, the usual recidivism rate is 80% among the convicts in the LSD project. Uh, 80% of them did not commit new crimes, did not become recidivists. And uh, in 1973, um, a follow-up study, as many of them as could be found, they were all still outside the walls. They were all still making their living in honest ways. They were not back in prison. That's the greatest experiment in the history of behavior change. So naturally, everybody involved got fired, and uh, the project was closed down, and pretty soon there was a law against any research to repeat that experiment or any experiment like it. And for protesting against this and fighting for scientific freedom, uh, Dr. Leary got five years, and he got 37 years, of which he served five and a half. And... Uh, other scientists in the field became as silent as moonlight on a gravestone. Until a few years ago, when they started to get their cojones back and they were, were, were beginning to get protest from the scientific community about this interference with research. But uh, meanwhile, the question is, okay, if we can't use acid, what can we use to teach people? And it seems virtual reality is a large part of the answer. People who've been in five different virtual realities and a couple of hours of entertainment will come out realizing that the reality, in quotes, of everyday life is being created by their brain too, just like the virtual realities are. And then, and then the major lesson of uh, the 20th century and the social sciences will be something people can use instead of something they understand and keep forgetting. As Gary Jeff said, forgetting is the enemy. We need new imprints. We need shocking experiences that make us remember the new knowledge. Okay, next question.